All right, here we go. This is chapter six on the normal distribution. In chapter six, section one, we will introduce normal distributions. So <clears throat> we will first consider this mathematical equation where uh, we obtain a y value by setting that equal to e to the negative x minus mu squared all divided by two times sigma squared. And then all of that exponential expression is all divided by sigma times the square root of two pi. All right, so pi is approximately equal to 3.14. E is another transcendental number. It's approximately equal to 2.718. Um, mu, of course, is our population mean, and sigma is the population standard deviation. And as it says here in my little skeleton notes, we won't use this. That's right. We will not ever really consider this equation. Um, we will instead rely on a freehand sketch of the graph of this function, which I have sketched right here. Um, <clears throat> Now, we're going to go over some various properties of the normal distribution curve. Property number one, it is bell-shaped. Okay, so it's the highest middle, and then it uh, slopes down on the left and right sides um, pretty fast. Number two, the mean, the median, and the mode are equal to one another, and they are at the center of this distribution. So right here... We have marked off mu, but that is the exact value of the median and the mode as well. Number three, the third property is that it is unimodal, meaning there is only one mode. Okay. All right. Number four, it is symmetric. So that means that the left half and the right half of the graph look identical to one another. Um, we were going to be using this feature or this property of the normal distribution curve uh, quite frequently. So remember that the left half and the right half are identical. If you are trying to find area underneath this curve and you're thinking about finding the area that's shaded in to the left here, well, then that would be the exact same as here if we're shading into the right, okay? But I'm kind of getting ahead of myself so let's back on track. Let's see. Oh, number five, it is continuous. That means there's no breaks in this curve. We cannot, we can, we can draw this whole curve without lifting our pencil off the page. And that's just a mathematical property of it. Number six, it never touches the x-axis. So our x-axis is the horizontal line. That is the bottom of the graph. And our graph, the curve, the top of this curve, never reaches the x-axis, meaning the function's value is never equal to zero. All right, and that is not really pertinent to our discussion. What is more pertinent is number seven, area underneath the curve is equal to 1.00, or in other words, we can view this as a probability density function or a probability distribution function because the area underneath the curve represents the probability, right? And that's what we're going to be looking at quite frequently here. And then going back up to what I have shaded in here, you know, reshaded, well, we're going to go over the empirical rule. So we remember this, that the proportion of the area within one times sigma, that's what that says there, is approximately equal to 0 0.68. Or in other words, 68% of the area underneath this curve is in this range from mu minus one copy of sigma all the way up to mu plus one copy of sigma. So that is 68% of the area, right? Then, as you can see, it kind of says here, ditto, 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 the proportion of area within two copies of sigma, the standard deviation, 
is approximately equal to 0.95. So you might remember the empirical rule says that this proportion right here, if you are within two copies of standard deviation, so from mu minus two sigma all the way up to mu plus two sigma, that is equal to 95% of the total area underneath this function's graph. All right, and then finally, the proportion of area within three times sigma is equal to approximately 0.997. So that means 99.7% of the area is contained within three standard deviations away from the mean. So here we are all the way from mu minus three copies of sigma up to mu plus three copies of sigma. And that gives us 99.7% of all of the area under that curve. <clears throat> all right. So to avoid any further technical difficulties, I'm going to stop the video and then we're going to move on to the next page.